Hey everybody, in this video we'll be exploring the different qualitative tests for identifying anions. There are two ways we normally use to identify anions, and these are precipitation and the use of an indicator to detect the presence of an acid or base. It's important to remember that the flame test is not used for anions as they are only applicable for metal cations. This is the list of the anions you need to know how to identify. This includes the halides, chloride, bromine, iodide, hydroxide, acetate, carbonate, sulfate, and phosphate. We will again look at these ions individually. I've grouped the halide ions together, so that is chloride, bromide, and iodide, as they all can be identified in similar tests. These three ions both produce precipitates with silver ions and lead ions. However, it is recommended that we use silver ions over lead ions as the latter is toxic. Although these three anions produce precipitates with silver ions, as you can see here, they produce precipitates with different colours. Silver chloride has a white appearance, silver bromide has a creamy appearance, whereas silver iodide has more of a yellowish appearance. Remembering the colours of each precipitate is a very useful way of identifying the presence of either chloride, bromide, or iodide ions. Hydroxyl ions can be identified using precipitation tests as well. We have three choices. By adding copper to ions, we can produce copper hydroxide, which is a blue precipitate. Iron 2 hydroxide is a green precipitate, or iron 3 hydroxide is a brown precipitate. The addition of either one of these three ions can give us a very unique colour of precipitates, so therefore all three are suitable for confirming the presence of hydroxide. A non-specific test to convert hydroxide ions is the use of indicators. As you probably remember from Module 6 Acid and Bases, hydroxide ions are what's responsible for making a solution basic. So therefore, in the presence of hydroxide, the pH of the solution will be greater than 7, and using litmus paper or universe indicator, we will get observations that indicate a basic solution. So these are both blue for the two indicators shown here. Acetate ions rarely form precipitates. So this means it is very ineffective to use precipitation as a way to identify acetate ions. Acetate is a conjugate base of acidic acid, which is a weak acid. So when acetate ions dissolve in water, they form the following equilibrium with water, whereby they produce hydroxyl ions. As such, we can confirm the presence of acetate by also using a form of indicator, red limits paper or universe indicator. Again, in this case, both of which will turn blue. A more specific test to confirm the presence of acetate ion, however, is by adding nitric acid. As we saw earlier, acetate ion is in equilibrium with acetic acid. By adding nitric acid, we are increasing the concentration of proton in this equilibrium. And according to the Le Chatelier's principle, this will shift the equilibrium towards the side of the acetic acid. In other words, by adding more nitric acid, we are increasing the concentration of acetic acid. Acetic acid is what's responsible for the vinegar smell that we often identify. So by producing more acetic acid, we will produce a strong vinegar odour. Now, although on paper, this test works quite well for identifying acetates, practically speaking, it's actually quite ineffective because often the vinegar smell is not strong enough to be recognised. Therefore, acetic ions are usually identified last, through a process of elimination. The best test for carbonate ions is by adding nitric acid. The reaction between nitric acid and carbonate ions produces carbon dioxide, and this produces bubbles in the solution. Carbonate ions also react with water to produce hydrogen carbonate and hydroxyl ions. The presence of these hydroxyl ions also mean the solution that contains carbonate is basic. So red limits paper turns blue, and the universal indicator also turns blue. Sulfate ions can be identified by adding acidified barium ions to produce a white precipitate that is barium sulfate. It is important to add an acidified solution of barium ions because 
a few drops of dilute nitric acid is required prior to precipitation to react with carbonate ions that could be potential in the solution. Remember that the reaction between nitric acid and carbonate produces water and carbon dioxide. If the solution doesn't contain acid, any presence of carbonate will also react with barium ions to also give you a white precipitate. In that case, it is impossible to tell between whether the white precipitate is barium sulfate or barium carbonate. Phosphate ions are very similar to sulfate ions in that we can also identify them by adding barium ions. However, the difference here is that we'll be adding an alkali or basic solution of barium ions. This is because under an acidic condition, phosphate ions do not precipitate with barium as they react with hydrogen ions or protons to give us hydrogen phosphate. Hydrogen phosphate do not precipitate with barium ions. This is why when we are trying to identify phosphates, we'll be adding a solution of ammonia to drive the equilibrium to the left-hand side to produce any amount of phosphate that could have been in the solution. And if the phosphate is present, they will then precipitate with the barium ions to give us barium phosphate. Besides precipitation, Phosphate ions can also be identified by using ammonia molybdate phosphate test. This is when the addition of nitric acid and a compound called ammonium molybdate will produce a yellow complex if there are any phosphate ions present. The chemical reaction between these chemicals are rather complex, so you will not be required to know them for the exam. However, it's good to know this as a very unique alternative to the precipitation test we learned earlier. Like many other anions, phosphate ions is the conjugate base of a weak acid. So it can react with water to produce hydroxyl ions shown by this equation. Therefore, we can also then use red limits paper, universal indicator to identify the potential presence of phosphate. However, hopefully you realize that using an indicator is not a very specific and effective test as acetate and hydroxyl ions will also produce basic solutions and give you exactly the same observations.